Today, we're very happy to have Matai. Um, and actually, I should say that uh, this is Matai's first travel after COVID, right, for a conference. And actually, last time, it was his last travel was to NYU AD, to this previous version of this conference, uh, NYU AD, at, uh, in 2020, right? So we're <laughs> very happy with this uh, nice uh, coincidence, in a way. OK, so we're very happy uh, to have Matai uh, from Adelaide, who's going to tell us about T-duality for loop spaces, or equivalently for the 1D sigma model. Hello. Yeah. Uh, thanks very much for the introduction, uh, Hisham. It's a great pleasure for me to give a talk here, especially with the new Center of Excellence, and uh, which is very impressive. And uh, I'm very proud and, uh, for your success. Um, my talk today is on T-duality for loop spaces, or 1D uh, sigma model. And I, I mean, this is not uh, very new work, but uh, the constructions here will be used by Behan in his talk. And that's uh, uh, new work which uh, has a striking consequence that, you know, it's uh, related to, it shows that T duality is. Uh, compatible with the modularity. So it's on uh, T duality on double loop space. So, and I, I, I think uh, that's a very striking, uh, you know, unexpected result. So, uh, but I'll do the more mundane stuff here. Uh, let me see. I'm going to try this thing since I have a big screen here. <laughs> So the talk, my talk is based mainly on uh, the first paper, but it's also based on this earlier work uh, which is done on space-time. And the other is on the loop space or the one I'm not sure I'll get through all of them because uh, uh, so also to time myself. Uh, I'll give some motivation for the uh, and then a review of Jerds. can be thought of as the background flux. And then <coughs> there is a holonomy line bundle of jobs, and this is a line bundle which is very natural on the loop space. And then there's uh, exotic uh, equivalent cohomology. I'll explain why that comes up. And then the Job modules, twisted K theory, twisted chunk character, and so on. And then finally, <laughs> there's a loop space refinement of the twisted churn character, and then T duality from a loop space perspective. Okay, so. So maybe I don't need to go through this uh, motivation for construction of loop space. So, it, well, but roughly, it started off with uh, ideas of a T and written on the index of the Dirac operator, you know, and it can be <coughs> interpreted as an integral of an equivalently closed differential form over loop space. But this is an old, very, very ancient story, so I won't go through it, uh, except I want to mention that Bismuth uh, extended this approach to Dirac operator twisted by a vector bundle. Although this seems like a small advance, it really uh, allowed him to construct a churn character, which I'll explain in another diagram, which goes from the K-theory of the manifold 
to instead of uh, cohomology of the manifold to the equivalent cohomology of loop space. So you constructed a, uh, a direct lift of the usual chain character. And he used uh, some kind of uh, path ordered exponential. Uh, if I have time, I'll go through the definition. So, <clears throat> so this, it is shown by Jones and Petrak that a completed version of the current cohomology of loop space with respect to the rotation circle action, this lo localizes to the ordinary cohomology of Z. So this was known to written, but perhaps proved by uh, <laughs> Jones and Petrak, and the difference, you know, they, there's a usual uh, localization of a tier bot, but the difference is since loop space is infinite dimensional, the localizing parameter U and U inverse, actually U inverse does not terminate. It can go to arbit, it goes all the way to infinity, you know, so because of the dimension of the manifold being infinite. So during my talk, I'll give more details, but anyway, and Bismuth refined the churn character in a way that this diagram commutes. This is what I was saying in words before. You have a map from the K theory of Z to the cohomology. This is the usual churn character. He lifted it to a churn character, which takes values in the equivalent cohomology of loop space. And finally, the relation is uh, localization, which uh, uh, just makes this diagram commute. So now I want to incorporate the flux. So uh, it's not as trivial as one thinks. Uh, so instead of the cohomology of Z on the bottom, I want to replace it with the twisted cohomology. So the twisted cohomology, just a brief review, is consists of <coughs> differential forms on Z with the differential being D plus H wedge. Since H is closed, this is a differential, and it's a Z2 graded cohomology theory, and it coincides with the cohomology of Z when H is zero. So it is first uh, introduced uh, or studied by Rome and Witten in 1986, and arose in string theory as uh, an approximate uh, version of the charge group classifying D brains. So it classifies it at least rationally and it has many applications in mathematics, such as twisted eta invariance, twisted analytic torsion, and so on. So Fehan and I actually uh, studied a version of the uh, jones petrak sort of localization, but here things are more complicated. So the thing is to find out what replaces uh, equivalent cohomology of uh, loop space, right? And this is where it gets interesting. It's what we call exotic equivalent cohomology. So what is that? So <clears throat> uh, there is a line bundle, as I said, uh, I'll explain this later on loop space which is associated with a gerb. So H is the dictionary dode invariant of the gerb, and LB is the line bundle on loop space, which is the holonomy line bundle. And there is a natural connection on this line bundle coming from uh, the connection on the gerb, and, and that's, the, uh, that's Nabla sub LB, okay? So the interesting thing is that uh, this connection is not flat. 
right? It curvatures the transgression of H. So it's very usual, unusual in cohomology that you have look at cohomology with values in a non-flat line model. But the thing that makes it work is that, uh, oh, sorry, I have to shift this. Is that there is a superconnection, S1 flat equivalent superconnection, which I'll define, and, and it's square zero on these differential forms with values in the line bundle, right? And that defines a cohomology theory which we call exotic equivalent cohomology theory. So we also defined a loop space refinement of the twisted churn character. So this, there's a, this is twisted K theory, which I'll explain later in my talk. There are many things to define, but anyway. And there's a chen twisted chen character, which is defined in a five author paper with uh, Carey, um, Murray, Botnick, and Stevenson. Yeah. Yeah. And we had defined this many years ago in 2000, I think. Yeah. And now with Pehan, we define the lift of this uh, twisted chain character. And this twisted chain character, we, we put a V in front of it, so it's like the twisted bismuth chain character. And now it maps into this equivalent uh, twisted cohomology. You see this side. And the relation is there is a localization theorem, so we generalize the jones petrak localization, which actually maps to the twisted uh, cohomology theory of Z were localized. And this diagram commutes. Okay, so that's the point. Uh, so the hard part was to guess uh, this all. It took us one week <laughs> to get it. So when I visited Feihan in uh, Singapore uh, to give a colloquium talk, and just uh, maybe one hour before I took off on the flight, uh, we managed to get this. <laughs> so the philosophy is that T-duality done on space-time which is something which I did with uh, Botnick and Elson, it's just a shadow of T-duality on loop space. So, sorry. <laughs> and uh, Therefore, we propose that the charge group of Ramon Ramon fields in this new cohomology theory on loop space is this new cohomology theory, that is the exotic equivalent uh, twisted cohomology theory. And the Ramon Ramon fields themselves are differential forms on loop space which coefficients in the holonomy line bundle, right? That are in the null space of the uh, flat superconnection. So I'll detail all this in my talk. So first, let me uh, start off with some basics, uh, which all of you know probably, and, but it's always good to hear it again. So <laughs> consider the pair Z and H, where Z is space-time and H is a background flux. And you know, I'm going to define uh, a connection on this job. So we study open colors, U alpha, Oh, sorry, what's that? Of Z, such as the space of loops, is an open cover of lo loop space of Z, right? And which is the C infinity of S1, Z. And the thing is that uh, so 
the usual check open car Z consisting of uh, convex sets does not satisfy this property, obviously, because uh, big loops are not included there. So if you take a loop and roughly the tubular nave of the loop, right, of every loop, that is definitely an open cover. And suppose that this is a maximal open cover of Z with the property that the, the, the ith cohomology of U alpha I, which is a multi-index, is zero for two and three. We can't assume it for I equals one. Of course, then it'll be false. And this uh, U alpha I is the intersection of the U alpha J, J, and I. And such an open cover is called a Brilinsky open cover of Z. Uh, he considers it uh, informally in his book. And it's easy to see that this is an open cover of the loop space of Z. So we start off with a, a closed uh, three form on Z with integral periods. Then H restricted to U alpha is, is exact, so it's D B alpha for some choice of B alpha since H3 is zero, that's the assumption of this open cover. And B alpha is a two form on U alpha. And B beta minus B alpha is D A alpha beta, since H2 of this is zero by the assumption here. Then H B A defines a connective structure, just a connection on the gerb. Okay, so this is the, uh, I guess, the Delin version of a connection on the gel. And <coughs> so a gel on Z is a collection of line bundles, uh, L alpha beta, on double overlaps such that on triple overlaps, there's a trivialization. If you take the tensor powers as such, then this phi alpha beta is just uh, a U1 value check to per cycle. Right? And this is the dixmay the invariant of the gerb in H3Z with coefficients in integers. So up to some equivalence, which I won't uh, mention here because it's a bit involved to actually define it, gerbs are classified by the third cohomology with the integer coefficients. And a, a trivial gerb is of the form L alpha beta is L A alpha tensor L beta dual, where L alpha is just a collection of line bundles, an arbitrary collection of line bundles. So this is a diagram which unfortunately I couldn't draw properly. <laughs> so you have uh, L alpha gamma here. Uh, the arrow should be this way and it's alpha beta here and L gamma beta here. And on the triple overlap, it's trivial. Okay, so here's an example, right? You can, t this is a spin C gerb. So if you have, uh, <coughs> uh, so G alpha beta from U alpha beta to SON, denotes a set of transition functions of the oriented orthonormal frame bundle of Z, right? Then recall that this SON has a central extension given by the spin C group. It's the non-trivial central extension. And let L be a line bundle over SON be the associated line bundle of this U1 a principal bundle, right? So L is just spin C N cross uh, C divided by U1. The gerb L alpha beta, which is the pullback under G alpha beta of this line bundle, 
L O S O N. This is called the spin C job of Z. Right? The Dixmay Dude invariant is equal to the integral Stiefel Whitney class, which was studied a long time before, but this is a geometric meaning for it. So every oriented manifold has a spin C gerb. Not every oriented manifold is spin C, but it has a spin C gerb. Okay. So this construction also works for oriented frame bundle of any oriented vector bundle over Z. Okay, just a remark. Then there are examples of PU gerbs. Well, it's almost exactly the same. So you take these uh, uh, U alpha beta to PU be the set of transition functions for a principal PU bundle over Z. And then you have this uh, central extension where you use the unitary group in infinite dimensions, I mean. And this is a central extension, L be the social line bundle, and then you pull this back to the manifold, and you get uh, a PU job. So the PU job, uh, the Dixmay do the invariant of it, is the abstraction lifting the PU bundle to a unitary bundle. Okay, so that's the. So the next thing is the uh, uh, connection on the job. So this is a collection of line bundles over each double intersection and such that there is a isomorphism from L alpha beta, L beta gamma to L alpha gamma on the triple overlap. And a collection of connections, nabla L alpha beta, such that nabla L alpha beta is D plus A alpha beta. And we have that the curvature of this connection is B beta minus B alpha. So now, so what I'm saying is uh, we have a job and we endow it with a, a choice of connection. And in this way, we get uh, the holonomy of this job with connection. This is a line bundle over LZ, over the loop space. So LB has an in a bunch of invariant uh, local sections, S1 invariant local sections, sigma alpha, with respect to this open cover. And the transition functions are e to the minus square root of minus one uh, tau of A alpha beta. So tau is the transgression map, right? And it's defined as tau of some form here is you pull it back under the evaluation map and integrate over the circle. Okay, so, so this is a function. And these local sections are related by sigma alpha and sigma beta are related by this uh, transition function. So the holonomy line bundle comes with a natural connection. So the connection is defined uh, with respect to this uh, basis sigma alpha is nabla LB is equal to D minus square root of minus one, the transgression of B alpha. The transgression of B alpha will be just a one form, right? So, so this is an actual connection the curvature of this connection when you compute is just minus the transgression of H, right? So transgression of H is a two form, close two form, and integral also. So LB is never flat unless H is uh, zero, uh, if H is not zero. So 
consider the space of differential forms on LZ, but with values in this line bundle LB. Remember, this is not a flat line bundle. And so this is sort of uh, like the space which we will define the exotic forms. And then there are some tensors. Um, let me just check the time again. Okay. There are some tensors on loop space. So the first one, if you check a form on Z, right, of degree I, you can extend it to be a differential form on loop space. So we think of Z as the constant loops in loop space. And the way we do this is for a parameter S between zero and one, we take uh, the hat of S of applied to some vector fields, X1 to Xi, applied to the loop gamma, to be omega of x1 restricted to gamma of s, xi restricted to gamma of s. And these are the exercise of vector fields on Lz defined near the loop gamma. And one checks that d of omega s hat is actually d, the d comes inside the hat. So the I form, the slight defect here is that it depends on the parameter S, but this can be fixed by integrating from zero to one omega hat S ds, okay? Then this becomes the differential form of degree I on loop space. So starting with a form on the constant loops, we get a form on loop space in this uh, canonical way. This was used in Bismuth's papers a lot when he uh, proved the index theorem using loop space techniques. And uh, one thing we notice is omega bar is actually invariant under rotation. So if K is the vector field inducing rotations, then the lead derivative of omega bar is zero with respect to this uh, k. And also d of omega bar is d omega bar. So it sort of commutes under the bar. And finally, the transgression of omega can be rewritten as omega bar and you contract with respect to the rotation vector field. So this is a very useful formula. And it uh, follows that omega bar actually restricts to omega on the submanifold. So we started off with omega, extended it to loop space, and of course when you restrict, you get back omega. It's not surprising. So now let h be as before, and h bar be the extended form to loop space. It's a degree three form on loop space, and it's closed. Now we define this exotic uh, uh, differential. So dh bar is a nabla, the connection on LB, which we defined before. And then this h bar, which is the extension of h to the loop space, minus contraction with respect to the rotation vector field. Okay. And here's the lemma that the square of dh bar is zero on loop space, right? Uh, on forms on loop space with values in this line bundle, and then you take the invariant part on the ro rotation. So this is uh, like a written conjugation trick. You can, uh, if you look at the square, and you sort of plug in what nabla h is, is d minus i k b alpha, and then minus i k plus h bar squared, 
and you rewrite it as such, and then you can write it as an exponential of B alpha D minus RK, exponential of B alpha, and that's the lead derivative minus the lead derivative of B alpha, which is zero. So it's just the lead derivative with respect to the rotation, and on invariant forms, the lead derivative vanishes. So therefore, you get that it's a dif differential. It's uh, the first place I've seen the superconnection appearing naturally. <laughs> so, so this is a flat, uh, dh bar is a flat circular equivalent superconnection in the sense of Quillen on the space of these exotic differential forms. So this is a Z2 graded complex uh, forms on uh, loop space with values in LB and circular equivalent and differentiate this, this differential. The Z2 graded complex, the cohomology of this complex is what we denote as this uh, equivalent uh, exotic twisted cohomology. <coughs> so the main thing is that uh, <coughs> And then we can uh, localize it. You put the U and U inverse in this differential as such. And the main thing is uh, generalization of the jones petrack localization. And the restriction to the constant loops says that this uh, cohomology it's isomorphic to the twisted cohomology localized with respect to U and U inverse, and U inverse does not terminate because of the infinite dimensionality of loop space. And this is an isomorphism. So we therefore say that uh, on loop space, uh, the analog of the twisted cohomology or the analog of uh, the charge group is this uh, twisted equivalent uh, cohomology. So that's the kind of proposal we have. Right, because it, uh, it agrees with the usual case in, in space-time. Uh, the next thing is uh, <laughs> GERB modules. So, so let U alpha be a Brelinsky open cover, as I explained. So it's an open cover of Z such that uh, loops on this U alphas is an open cover of loop space. And um, so these job modules are going to be elements in twisted K theory. So they're not uh, finite dimensional. So they consist of infinite dimensional Hilbert bundles, right? Um, e alpha or U alpha. And the structure group uh, for convenience is reduced to unitaries of the form identity plus trace class, right? In addition, on the O laps, we assume that, uh, remember, L alpha beta is the gerb, right? So it's a module in the sense that L alpha beta tends to E beta, which is uh, the Hilbert bundle restricted to the open set U beta is isomorphic to uh, the Hilbert bundle restricted to the open set U alpha, and it's a specific set of isomorphisms phi alpha beta. And because of the gerb property, I mean, so if you have a third thing, 
you use the fact that L alpha beta tensor L beta gamma tensor L gamma alpha is one, you see that uh, you, you get a corresponding uh, condition on E alphas. And that makes it a gerb module for the gerb L alpha beta. So now uh, you need to uh, define a connection on this gerb module. So first uh, you define a connection on each uh, locally for this E's, right, which you can, there exists a connection, and it's of the form D plus A alpha, A alpha E is a one form on U alpha tensor with trace class operators. And the curvature is, uh, it satisfies this condition that uh, if you take the curvature of alpha or alpha and the curvature of beta, and then you use the phi alpha beta inverse, right? You get the curvature of the gerb L alpha beta, right? So, so and then using the fact that this uh, the gerb has the property that the uh, curvature of L alpha beta is B beta minus B alpha, and then some little algebra says that phi alpha beta inverse of B alpha plus F E and phi alpha beta is uh, F at beta plus the uh, B beta, right? So, This uh, exponential minus B of trace of exponential minus of the curvature of E, and then you have to throw in minus the identity because you can't take trace of the identity. This is a global well-defined differential form on Z of even degree. Okay, so the caveat was the trace of identity is infinity, which is why you need to look at the subtraction. And using this formula, if you have another bundle E prime, right, then the, uh, the point is that the difference exponential e to the minus b trace of exponential e to the minus a, fe minus exponential of F E prime, this is a global form, and this is the ten character of the pair E and E prime. Okay, so that's the, that was proof in my paper with the five authors in 2000. And this is called the twisted ten character. And further order exponentials I won't explain because most of you uh, are experts in this, in physics, so I'll skip that. So the path order exponential is used to lift the chain character uh, from the manifold to loop space. And in that way, you get the, you can get the twisted Bessel term character as living inside this, uh, you know, uh, exotic differential forms or loopses. So. So here, the, the final part of my talk is this uh, thing on T-duality. So consider Z and Z-head are principal circle bundles or base X. 
with fluxes H and HH respectively. So the H is on Z and HH on Z hat. And they satisfy the following that if you sort of integrate or push forward the H hat to X, you get the first term class of the TO and the same on this side. If you take H hat and push forward or integrate along the far bar, you get the first term class of this side. So it's symmetric. Uh, as I said it, it's not unique. But if you insist that H minus H hat is exact on the correspondence space Z cross uh, X Z hat, which I could have drawn here, then the teleology theorem for circle bundles in my paper with uh, Botnick and Epsilon states that there's an isomorphism of subtly twisted cohomology and then it can be refined to an isomorphism of twisted k theory. And the thing to note is there's a degree shift. So if this is even, it becomes odd. If this is odd, it becomes even, and so on. So now I'll combine all this. So using the localization theorem that I proved with Faye, which generalizes the jones petrack theorem, and then properties of the twisted bismuth term character, which we established. And finally, the teleology theorem for circle bundles in my work with Botnick and Epsilon. We obtain the teleology isomorphism of loop space as follows. This is the diagram. Let me just explain it. So I claim there's an isomorphism T from this exotic equivalent uh, cohomology of loop space <coughs> to the equivalent cohomology of the loop space of the TDO, right? And there's a degree shift. And how does this work? So it's a little bit of a cheat. So uh, this isomorphism, uh, wait a minute. This isomorphism was established in my paper at uh, Bartnick and Epsilon, and uh, the same over here. Okay, and this is the bismuth, uh, the twisted bismuth chain character which maps to the space, and this is the localization isomorphism. So since this is an isomorphism, we can just lift it to define a map T in this way, in this horizontal arrow. You can ask, uh, why can't I define it uh, directly? And the problem is that this Teleology isomorphism involves integration. And here it's integration over infinite dimensional space. Somehow that poses a, a huge problem. But in this way, we sidestep the problem and define it. It's well defined, but only on the level of cohomology. Usually, teleology can be defined on the level of forms. But we can't do it on a level of force because of the infinite dimensionality of the space. So this is the result. And finally, it's compatible with the chain character going from here to here. This diagram commutes. And this is in that paper in CMP in 2015. Well, uh, at this time, I'll end my talk. If there are any questions, uh, please do feel free to ask. Uh, questions from Atai? Yeah. Um, so this is for T-duality. Hi, so this is for T-duality, uh, and obviously string theory. 
So the obvious question given the conference is what do you do in terms of things like duality and higher forms and things that I guess must generalize loop spaces to higher things? Uh, I mean, Faye will be talking about double loop space. Is that what you're talking no, about? No, no, I mean more um, that, you, well, you have a loop, uh, which of course is associated to string world sheets from the string perspective. Yeah. And then in M theory, and then of course, if you've spoken out, the connection is related to the Nevis Schwartz two form. But then if we go to M theory, we have a three form and we have membranes and potentially five brains. But is there a version of T duality for M theory? Well, that would be U duality. U duality. Oh, no, I, I'm sorry. That's beyond me. <laughs> I don't, I haven't studied it. Okay. It will involve S duality, which is not exactly geometric or topological. Well, S-duality might be geometric in exceptional field theory. Yes, and actually there is T-duality for M-theory exactly in exceptional field theory by my work with the uh, ORS. Um, so there is a version, but it involves exactly that. Okay. Uh, ex exceptional spaces, let's say. Right. Extended space times. There's a T-duality in M-theory with a T-3. Other questions? Uh, thank you for the interesting talk. Uh, uh, I was wondering, um, it seems like there are all sorts of uh, ingredients to have uh, a, a twisted version of uh, the Hirzebruch riemann rauch theorem. Uh, is there such uh, a thing uh, in, in this context? Uh, so I've been working with uh, Melrose on uh, index theory for in the twisted case. Uh, we can do it in restricted situations, like when the twist is decomposable or uh, virtually decomposable. And unfortunately, not in general, because the associated job in the general case is infinite dimensional. And to talk about differential operators in infinite dimensions is just, uh, well, it's, there's no technology for it yet. Uh, yes, yeah, th this is why it's uh, interesting and challenging. It would be interesting and challenging. But on yeah. the other hand, uh, you have this, uh, relation to the equivariant cohomology uh, through those churn characters. Um, yeah. Uh, not the equivariant, but <clears throat> the twisted cohomology of Z mm -hmm. uh, in your talk. And mm -hmm. uh, so you can actually maybe pull through things uh, through the finite dimensional. Right. Uh, but so if you're, case. if you're talking about just the uh, topological Riemann rock, that yeah. can be yeah. done. Uh, yeah. That has been done already. But I'm talking about the analytic uh, Riemann rock. That's not uh, done mm -hmm. like because a of the difficulty. The T.S. Singer, hmm? the T. Singer formula. Yeah, that's okay. uh, not done. But if you just talk about the Riemann rock, in you know, like the Grothendieck Riemann rock, that's mm. been done in the twisted case in general. By, by who? Oh. So it's we did it, uh, I did it in my work with Jara and Peter, but then many people sort of improved it. So like, uh, I think Kerry and Wang, and then uh, Schick and collaborators, and Bunker Schick, I think, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Questions from Matai? So Matai evaded integration of Fiber because you avoided the Gizen sequence, is that? Yeah, I mean, in the Hori formula, right, if you want to write it in, uh, in loop space, you see it involves integration uh, along the fiber, and the fiber will be loops on something. So, you know, there is the integration on loops on something, like Wiener integration. But it has very bad properties when it comes to smooth uh, forms. 
So it's usually zero on smooth forms. So it's only non-zero on continuous forms. So you have to do some stochastic integration. So maybe if you are courageous enough and do stochastic integration, then it may be possible to write a formula. So for instance, uh, Bismuth did some stochastic integration and all that. I don't know. But it sounds involved. Yeah, it sounds hard, but it's a challenge for people who have uh, sounds who are good. willing. Sounds good. OK, any other questions? OK. If not, let's thank Matai again for the very nice talk. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.